Hey everybody, welcome to the alpha version of RetopoFlow 4. The way that it works is a bit different than RetopoFlow 3, so this video is going to be a quick walkthrough to help you get started. Once you have RetopoFlow 4, then you can install it right next to RetopoFlow 3, at least for this version. In the final version, it'll just replace it completely, but for now you can install it right alongside, just like any other add-on. So click Install in Blender's Preferences and navigate to the zip and load that in. So I'll go ahead and disable RetopoFlow 3 for now, and you'll notice that the RetopoFlow menu in the 3D view header is completely gone. And that's because the tools in RetopoFlow 4 now exist in edit mode, which is extremely exciting. So there's no longer a separate RetopoFlow mode at all, they're just right next to all the other edit mode tools. The way to get started is to select an object and hit Shift A, go to Mesh, and choose either Retopology at Cursor or Retopology at Active. The difference between these is that it'll place the origin point either wherever the origin point for the active object is or at the 3D cursor, but also if you choose at active, then it'll take into account its local orientation as well. So for now, I'll just hit shift A and let's do retopology at active. And that's going to jump us straight into edit mode with the polypen tool enabled. Now, right now, polypen is the only RetopoFlow tool that's available in the alpha, but the others will be ported soon. It's jumped us right into the polypen tool. So the polypen tool is active, but also we have a bunch of settings that are set up specifically for retopology. So the snapping is set up for retopology. We have auto merge on over in the top right of the tools settings. And also we have the edit mode retopology overlay enabled. And right off the bat, we can just start placing points and creating triangles and quads. To do that, hold down control and left click. That'll place one point. And if you continue to hold down control, then you'll see it stretching to create a line. And then if you hold control and left click again, then it'll create that line. And if you continue to hold control, then you can draw out some polygons. Now, right now this is set to quad only, but by default, it's going to be tri quad. So when you do that, if you hold down control, it'll just snap to whatever the nearest selected face is. And then if you left click, then you'll place a triangle. But then if you left click again, it'll define the other side of the quad. So this is a really great way to work and it's a lot more precise than using the quad only method because then you get to manually define each four points of the quad. So it does take a little bit longer, but it's much more precise and you can do some more interesting work that way. Now, if you want to do quad only, that also works quite well and you can just draw out very quickly like so, again, while holding control as you go. And you can also set this to triangle only if you really want to. And there's also edge only in case you don't want to fill in any faces. For the most part though, I leave it at tri quad. Now when you switch out of any of the RetopoFlow tools, then it'll turn off the retopology mode, it'll turn off auto merge, and it'll turn off snapping. Though the snapping settings are still set to the retopology settings that are set within RetopoFlow, but in the future I'll make sure that this gets switched back to whatever your previous snapping settings were. And that's really all you need to know to get started. It's created a new object that's named whatever the previous object was with underscore retopology. And all you need to do to continue your retopology is just select the polypen tool again. So it should be really convenient and fast to work with. The snapping is going to be based on whatever is visible in the 3D viewport. So if you have an object you don't want to snap to, for example, these eyes, then you can just go ahead and hide them before you start your retopology. Polypen is pretty simple, but it is incredibly powerful once you get used to it. One thing that you'll notice is that when you switch to polypen, you're in vertex, edge, and face select mode. That allows you to select a face, left click and drag to tweak it, select an edge, left click and drag to tweak it like so, and select vertices as well. If you left click and drag over vertex, then you'll just jump right into tweak mode for that. Uh, currently that's not set up for edges or faces, but that's something that we could look at in the future. So if you just left click on a face, uh, it's not going to select it. It'll just drag whatever the selected vertex is but you can select edges and faces and move them around just by left clicking. To bridge any gaps with polypen, then you can just select one edge, hold down control, and then hover over any other edge, and then left click to confirm. The performance here is light years ahead of RetopoFlow 3, so poly counts should be no issue at all, and you have full access to all of Blender's other tools as you work. I think you'll find this workflow a huge improvement over RetopoFlow 3, and I can't wait to introduce you to the rest of the tools as they get added to the alpha. So thanks for watching and keep an eye on our email list or follow us on Twitter at RetopoFlow for more updates.